Hello, star person, and welcome back to Earth Sky. Do you want to see the planet Saturn using just your eyes? Saturn is the faintest of the bright planets, the ones that are easy to see with the eye alone. And we're coming up on Saturn's opposition when Earth flies between Saturn and the Sun, as we do every year. In 2025, opposition for Saturn will come on September 21st. So we're now in the very best time of year to see this outer planet. And I'm going to tell you why. So spare me a few minutes here, and I'll tell you how to spot Saturn and what to look for. And we'll talk about Saturn's beautiful rings because of the current geometry of earth and saturn in space the rings have been doing something interesting this year so september 21st saturn's opposition that's when we go between it and the sun and by the way don't worry too much about that exact date all the nights around then all night or nearly all night for about six weeks on either side of September 21st are fantastic for viewing Saturn in 2025. Plus, all of these images I've just shown you aren't what you'll see in your night sky. These are all Saturn close up as seen by the wonderful Cassini spacecraft, which orbited Saturn from 2004 to September 2017. And that's when the spacecraft was deliberately plunged back into Saturn's thick atmosphere. More about that another time. In the meantime, let's talk about seeing Saturn in the night sky. And here's a fun fact. At opposition, Saturn is opposite the sun. So as I mentioned, we're flying between Saturn and the sun on September 21st. So just pretend my head is the Earth and the sun is over here and Saturn is over here. We're going between Saturn and the sun. So Saturn and the sun are opposite. Uh, and that's why at opposition, Saturn rises in the east and stays visible all night. This chart shows early evening as seen from my latitude uh, in the Northern Hemisphere. That's about 30 degrees north latitude. And this is not long after sunset. And we're looking east. Uh, for all of Earth, Saturn is now the brightest star in the east after sunset. And there's another bright star nearby. It's the star Fomalo, sometimes called the loneliest star. It got that name because no other bright stars are near it, but Saturn is near it this year. We have a link in the post description to more about Fomalo. So you'll be looking for two bright things in the eastern part of the sky after sunset. Saturn will be brighter than this bright star and Saturn will be the one shining with a steady light. And meanwhile, Fomalo will be twinkling as all stars do. Okay, so Saturn rises at sunset and fun fact number two, at opposition, it's brightest for the year. It's always as bright as the brightest stars. It's always easy to pick out if you know where to look, but it's at its very brightest right now. Fun fact number three, on September 21st, Saturn will be closest to Earth for the year 2025 at about 71 light minutes away. Fun fact number four, you can only see Saturn as a golden disk if you look through a telescope. But telescope users know that the disk of Saturn appears largest for the year around now. And the rings are at their widest and brightest for the year too. Now, about the rings. 2025 has been an interesting year for Saturn's rings. Earlier this year, we crossed the plane of the rings, and that means that our planet Earth passed through the thin, flat layer of space in which Saturn's rings orbit around the planet. And the rings orbit above Saturn's equator, and they're very wide. You could fit 27 planet Earths across the width of Saturn's main rings. They're about 175,000 miles across. But the rings are extremely thin, maybe only about 
30 feet thick. So very wide, but super thin. And that's why when we pass through the ring plane, as we do every 13 to 15 years, the rings seem to disappear for a few weeks. And that was the case back in March 2025, when we last passed through the plane of Saturn's rings. And here's how Saturn's rings look to the Hubble Space Telescope around the time of a ring plane crossing. When these crossings happen, people are like, okay, Saturn with no rings, ho oh, hum. Now, when are the rings coming back? But something else happens around the time of a ring plane crossing. We begin to see dark spots on Saturn's cloud tops, as in this image, which is from May, it's from our friend Robert Lunsford of the American Meteor Society. Bob, thank you. And if you look carefully here, you can see a black dot on the planet. And that is the shadow of Saturn's large moon, Titan. So the rings orbit in the plane of Saturn's equator and so do the primary moons of Saturn. So when we're in the ring plane, as we've been this year, again and again, we see the shadows of Saturn's moon crossing Saturn's disk and rings. And scientists call these events shadow transits. The most exciting ones do involve Saturn's large moon Titan, as you can see in this animation from Earth Sky community member Steve Bellavia in Virginia. Thank you, Steve. And here's another beautiful shadow transit image from another Earth Sky community member, Brian Martin in California. Brian, thank you. Um, Bob King and I, AKA Astro Bob uh, and I, streamed on the subject of shadow transits of Saturn's moons just a few weeks ago. And that link is in the post description. And in this images and all the images I just showed you, it appears that the moon shadows are crossing above Saturn's rings, but that's just because uh, for about a decade and a half prior to last March, we'd been looking at the north side of Saturn's rings. And in March, we crossed the ring plane. So now from our earthly perspective, we're looking at the south side of the rings and Earth and Saturn, of course, are always moving in space. Our perspective is always shifting. So for the past few months, the shadows of Saturn's rings have appeared to us to be above the, or the shadows of Saturn's moons have appeared to us to be above the rings, further above, uh, further and further each month as uh, that goes by since the ring plane crossing. And the last shadow transit of the large moon Titan will be on October 6th. After that, as seen from Earth, Titan's shadow will miss the disk of Saturn entirely until we cross the ring plane again in the years 2039 and 2040. And just a final note about the rings, you can easily see Saturn with the eye. It looks like a golden star, but you can't see the rings without a telescope. Steadily held binoculars will show you Saturn as a bright oval shaped disc, but no rings but even a small backyard telescope will clearly show the rings and they are beautiful to see for yourself. And now is the best time of 2025 to see that. And by the way, it wasn't until the 17th century that telescopes revealed that Saturn has rings. And imagine how surprising that must have been. Uh, and even when I first started in astronomy in the 1970s, astronomers was, were still speaking of Saturn as having just three rings. But then, beginning in the late 20th century, earthly spacecraft began showing us vastly more detail. They revealed that Saturn has thousands of thin, finely detailed rings, and they also showed that the rings are made of tiny chunks of ice. 
And in addition, Saturn has literally hundreds of known moons. Only 13 of Saturn's moons have diameters larger than about 30 miles. But the current count for Saturn's moons is 274 confirmed moons for Saturn. And that total was announced just this past March after the discovery and official recognition of 128 new Saturn moons all at once. Astronomers used the Canada-France Hawaii telescope at Mauna Kea to find these new Saturn moons. They did it by running a comprehensive observing campaign beginning in 2019. This visualization is from Tony Dunn. Tony, thank you for letting us show this. Unlike the rings and the larger moons, these new moons have orbits that are tilted and elongated, and some are retrograde or moving opposite Saturn's rotation. And some might have been captured by Saturn's gravity, or they might be the result of collisions in the space near Saturn. And, you know, that makes me wonder if there's another story there, since the rings themselves are thought by some astronomers to be only temporary and less than 100 million years old. I'm kind of picturing something collisional happening there, maybe to create both the rings and these new moons. But that's also a story for another time. And in the meantime, watch for Saturn. We go between it and the sun on September 21st. So it's rising in the east when the sun is going down in the west. Saturn is everyone's favorite object to view through a small telescope. So if there's a public astronomy night near you this month or next, go and see Saturn's rings. One Earth, one sky, Earth sky. <laughs>